Okay, we're rolling. Right, it's uh, it's Rob Shanks here and Darren Chandler, directors of Spine Plus. The sun's shining, but we're indoors, not getting any sun. We thought we'd go through a few scans and just uh, advising a few patients here. We thought we'd film it and uh, should be helpful for a few people, we hope. Okay, so here we go. We've got a, just a very quick whistle stop to of an MRI scan here. So here you can see this is the these are the spine in, in side view or sagittal view as we call it and these are the discs in between the vertebrae and hopefully you can see here this one's a bit damaged um, it's different to these others, they've got the nice sort of nucleus of the discs and the others here but this one here is, you can't see it so clearly, it's starting to dry out a little bit um, down the back of the spine here we've got this thing called the posterior longitudinal ligament and you can see down the bottom here this is starting to peel away and pull away and the reason for that is that there's some, there's some disc damage down here that's been bulging and buckling into this ligament and, and pushing it away. Um, at first, you know, at first sight, yeah, obvious diagnosis, disc degeneration. Uh, this chap's got a little bit of a, a tear at the back of the disc here. You can see this thing called a high intensity zone. That means a little bit of a posterior disc tear. And, um, you know, standard sort of physical therapy treatment for that. Uh, might be your core stability exercises. Um, um, we might, you know, we would might want to try this this chap on some IED therapy, um, doing various things and other little modalities we had in. Um, before he came to us, my right saying Darren, he he was doing some McKenzie exercises. This chap and mm. yeah, this was a gentleman really who came to well. see us. He was suffering with lower back pain. It was centralised in nature. He had no leg symptoms. Um, but what he was finding was was that he'd been to a local NHS um, physiotherapist who'd recommended some various exercises, one being um, an extension exercise. So if you can imagine lying down on your tummy, um, hands by your side, and he was being asked to sort of extend upwards from the floor, so lifting his sort of head and shoulders off the floor. So arching his back. Arching backwards. his back, yeah, which is it's quite a fairly standard uh, set of exercises to give patients who have got yeah. disc problems. And the theory behind it is that what you're trying to do is you're almost closing down the back of the disc where the disc is protruding, um, and therefore creating essentially a bit of a stretch at the front. And the idea is to try and pull or you know, re reduce the disc bulge at the back, almost pull the disc forward to try and pull pull the disc away. Yeah, so well, it, you know, it can work for some people, but if, you, if we look at this scan a bit more detail, we can see why this, for this particular guy, it wasn't really, the answer wasn't really very Yeah, uh, so we tend to get a lot of patients in clinic who say that they do these extending exercises and it tends to make their symptoms worse. Well, this is a classic MRI scan of, as to why it doesn't work. You'll see here that the discs themselves are pretty much, there's a slight little bulge here, but they're pretty much in line um, with the vertebral body and then as you come down you'll start to see that this L5 disc has sort of prolapsed out somewhat and if I just move it up a, um, a slide you can see I've drawn some angles in here so the, the sacral base is really sort of digging in to the posterior sort of inferior aspect of the disc and then over the top you can see the L5 is just overlapping so this is medically is known as a retro um, spondylolisthesis so this bone is slightly further back in nature compared to the anterior part of the sacrum a grade one it's, it's very minor but what you're going to get here is is that as this patient tends to extend backwards then this disc and this bone will start to push down and hence the sacrum will dig into the inferior part of this disc. So this whole sort of posterior segment of the disc is going to get squashed on extension. Now I've treated this patient quite a few times and he absolutely um, loves sort of having his legs brought up into his chest, so a knee hug. And when he does this, he finds that this gives his back, you know, uh, sort of most relief. Um, from his symptoms. So lots of flexion he tends to enjoy, but anything held in extension that he doesn't seem to like at all. And you can see on this picture you as can to see the, reasons the reasons why. why yeah. Yeah. And this is, and just to add to finally onto this, a, a lot of patients who will have got the MRI results of this particular scan, they would have said that there's some minor sort of degenerative changes, small sort of protrusion of the disc, but there's nothing serious going on when really this patient's in absolute agony for long periods of time when walking, standing, um, but every time he visits his GP, They've basically said that there's not a lot going on, so just to take oral analgesics and, you know, it's a bit of physiotherapy, but as I've said, this is tending to make him worse sort of long term. Yeah, and I suppose also what, what the point we're trying to get across here is that, you know, the report for this MRI scan would have come back saying, as Darren mentioned, the retroalysthesis, the disc degeneration, you know, and it's a, 
a fairly standard thing. Other people would have had similar reports, um, you know, mentioned. Um, but really, what we're trying to get across here is that by really scrutinising the scan, um, you know, it's good for the physical therapist to really scrutinise the scan because you can see why this guy would have been getting pain in extension um, and the reasons for that, and and you know, perhaps ways and other ways of trying to treat him and other exercises to give him, and even other you know treatment modalities that we might want to use on him. Um, mm. So, yeah. so, and just bring up a, a, a sort of axial view of this. So, this so is the axial view means almost like a slice through the middle now. Okay, so yeah. we're we've got a little cross section of what's going on with this particular patient. Um, so, just quickly, just want to say, so this is the disc here, uh, yeah. the disc area here. This is the back of the spine. This is what's called the spinous process. These are the, the facet joints, either left and right of the spine, and then you've got the muscles running down the down the back here. Mm. And you can see that. <coughs> On the axial view, here's a spinal canal here. It's actually quite nice. It's open. Um, there doesn't look to be any major disc material at all. If anything, there's a little slight protrusion here over onto the left side, which again is where the majority of his pain is. But again, you would generally say that he has a potential for some sort of L5 nerve root to be in the foramen. In the foramen. Yeah. But overall, if you was a radiologist reporting on this scan, you, you, you wouldn't say that this person you know, would be in a hell of a lot of pain, but ideally, you know, he, he is suffering quite badly. So in terms of treatment, Rob, what would you recommend or refer the patient for? So for this particular guy, I would definitely you know, suggest to him to, to avoid overextension exercises. So be careful with things like um, breaststroke, swimming, that sort of stuff, where you could be arching backwards too much. We'd want to give him quite a lot of nice core stability, ex core stability exercises, get his transversus abdominis working well, possibly even look at his rectus abdominis, the normal sort of flexors. However, we wouldn't get him doing, oh, I would personally wouldn't get him doing things like, you know, roll downs and standing weight bearing flexion, so, you know, long leg sitting, because then that, although that might be flexing him, you, you're then potentially having an adverse weight bearing effect, uh, putting adverse pressure on the back of that disc that's already damaged. Do you agree mm. with that, Darren? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so, um, you know, core stability, we maybe tr could try some acupuncture on him, uh, deep kneeling into the muscles around the spine at the back to try and you know, get them a bit more improved. Um, mm. Possibly, you know, we could, we could we could be a candidate for the IDD therapy, although we'd have to be a little bit careful of that that disc tear that we saw there. I'll probably start him off with just the avoidance exercises and core strengthening. See how he got on with that for a while, and if, if that wasn't working, then you know, perhaps step things up a little bit, um, mm. and then we could move on to you know things like the IDD. Well, I can go one step further go there. For it. Um, I totally agree with that, and that's exactly what we had been doing. And it gave him about three or four days relief, um, and then symptoms returned. And it was specially on standing. So you mean each time he was treated, he had a few days yeah, relief? Yeah, a few days relief, and then okay. symptoms returned. So, so you can imagine this, is, this was a patient of Darren's. You can, you can yeah, tell. <laughs> that's the one. Keeping Rob on his toes here. Um, but yes, in the end, I referred him to a pain consultant who basically did a, a um, local epidural at L4 and five and he did an l5 nerve root block and so far he has been completely symptom free oh, great. excellent mm. so it's been a good outcome but it just shows that you know there are certain patients that you know will will do well with the physical therapy side of things but they also respond well with the injections mm. okay, okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's move on to another